Hello plant friends, my name is Victoria and you're watching Plantastics. Today we're going to be exploring the world of peace lilies, how to care for them and how to get them to rebloom and some of the common problems that people have in owning a peace lily. So first off, there are many different varieties of peace lilies. This one is a platinum um, peace lily and it just has, it looks like silver or lighter colored lines on the leaves and this has green flowers instead of the white. Then you've got your typical ones that you're gonna be able to find in grocery stores that have dark green leaves and the white flowers and they can come in like big, medium and small. And I'm sure they have specific names, but that's pretty much how I refer to them. I have an incredibly large one that I recently repotted. And then you've got your domino, which seems to be picking up in popularity, which is a dark and white. It's got variegation on the leaves. And then you also have another one that has more ridges. So all of these plants may look very different, but they're all peace lilies, which lucky for you means that they all have the same amount of care. So I'm going to talk about water, light, and fertilizing. So something else that goes along with watering is repotting. If you have a plant that is always thirsty, it seems like no matter how much you water it, the plant is just always needing more water, that may be a sign for you to repot the plant because the roots have completely gone through all of that soil. So as soon as the water touches the soil, the plants completely just drink it up. Another thing that can be a sign of needing to repot is the soil becoming hydrophobic. And that's gonna look like when you go to pour the water, you are going to have balls of water because the soil isn't able to absorb the water anymore. So those are two of the signs that you need to repot. So in terms of watering, you're going to want to bottom or top water these. It doesn't really particularly matter. The most important thing is that you're going to want to water around the root ball of that plant and really saturate it. So one of the most effective ways that I've been able to do this is by putting it into a tub of some kind and just pouring water in from the top and allowing it to go through. That way the entire root ball is completely saturated and the peace lily is able to absorb all of that water. So plants, of course, peace lilies really thrive on bright indirect light. Well, what does that mean? That means that in my experience, they can tolerate morning sun, but if they come into direct sunlight with the middle of the day or the afternoon, that sun's a bit stronger and it's going to burn the leaves. If you don't have a place that gets morning sun, you can have a place that is getting indirect light. Like it's basically indirect is, I think of light that's bouncing off of something and coming in and touching the plant. That's great. You can also use artificial lights, which I'll talk more about in the end. So it's very important to repot once a year, like I've said, and then also you want to fertilize your peace lilies. You really want to fertilize all of your plants. Oftentimes we want a plant to perform a certain way, whether it be blooms or new growth, and it's really not doing that for us. And plants respond to their environment. So when they're not growing in a way that you would like, it means that they are lacking something. One of the things people often overlook is fertilizing their plants. They think, oh, I repot once a year, what's the big deal? Well, once the plant has completely taken up all the nutrients from the soil, it has a hard time growing. So fertilizing is a really great way to supplement their needs. You can also use different mineral supplements like I use Super Thrive. So the two fertilizers that I've used on my peace lilies and all of my indoor plants are the organic fertilizer from Miracle Grow. It's a powder type um, granules and you mix it up with water. And then I also add Super Thrive. And in addition to that, I use distilled or rainwater. So there are some problems that people run into when they have peace lilies. So one of the largest problems that people run into is that their peace lily isn't flowering. Like I've stated earlier, whenever a plant's not performing in the way that you'd like, it's probably because it's missing something. So here are three different ways that I ensure that my peace lilies, if not constantly,
in bloom, they have blooms for me at least every three months. And blooms are really just like a kind of like a thing that happens when you care for them and you provide them everything that they need. So one of the things that I highly recommend are the GE bloom bulbs. GE makes two different bulbs and they have growth and then they have blooming. All of the bulbs in my house are the blooming ones because I think it's so cool when alocasias bloom or really any of my plants bloom. I mean, heck, I've even got Spanish moss blooming behind me. So I use those bulbs. I actually have one right above me here that you can't see it's out of the frame. And it actually, even though this is all the way on the ground here, is getting enough of light from that to be triggered to bloom. So in addition to having grow bulbs that are going to be promoting blooming, I also use a fertilizer that promotes blooms as well. And it doesn't just promote blooming, it also promotes new growth. So I use the organic bloom fertilizer and that also helps all of my plants bloom. You can use it on air plants like I have behind me here, like my Spanish moss is blooming. You can use it, you know, on peace lilies. You can really use it on any and everything. I've used it on my cacti and I've had them blooming too. Um, so you can change your lighting. You can make sure that you're fertilizing. Also, like I've said previously, make sure you're repotting your plants at least once a year um, and watering them to where they don't dry out. So if you cover all of those bases, your plant's gonna have more than what it needs to survive and it's gonna celebrate by throwing up flowers for you. Something else that people have whenever they have peace lilies is brown tips. So plants really, you know, we sweat, animals like birds and dogs, they pant. Well, plants, they do something called, they get rid of extra water through a process called transpiration. And through transpiration, they're basically releasing water. So some of the times when you're using heavy or hard water or soft water, there are different minerals that build up in the leaves. And what'll happen is those minerals will build up and they won't be able to be released with the rest of the water. And that's what causes brown tips. Um, and what I did to get rid of that is basically, I just started using distilled water and rainwater. If you're not able to do that, Brown tips are really something that aren't detrimental. They're just not attractive to look at. So if you don't want to make the switch to carrying around distilled water every time you come home from the grocery, no worry, you can just snip these off and it'll be fine. Something else that people really worry about with peace lilies is when they start dropping leaves. So plants normally are going to replace leaves. It's kind of like the hairs on our head. So you lose hair all of the time, but your body's constantly making new hair so you don't go bald. Well, with peace lilies, I think as long as the older leaves, see how it's kind of coming from the center, we've got all this new growth coming from the center. If you're just having leaves being dropped from the outer portion, basically the older leaves, that's not a bad sign, especially if you have new leaves coming in to replace it. However, if all of your leaves start turning yellow, that can be a sign that you have root rot or that you've been overwatering, which is kind of hard to do with these. I've honestly never done that. And I've had family and friends that are constantly dumping water in there. But one of the biggest ways to tell if you have root rot is you're going to notice a smell because the soil is literally rotting. So if you notice a really foul smell coming from your plants, it's probably root rot and what I would do would be, first of all, remove the plant from that sitting in stagnant water and you can go and repot it or just leave it separated. Basically, what you wanna do is remove the problem or the cause of the problem, which is that stagnant water being in contact with the roots because the roots, believe it or not, even though they're submerged in underground, they still need to be able to have contact with air for them to stay alive. So I hope that this video is able to help you figure out what your peace lily needs. And if you've got some interesting varieties, comment your favorite one below. If you have any further questions, be sure to comment those as well. And I'll be trying to answer those. Until then, I'll see you next time. Goodbye.